This is Base to Kid, the hardcore casual, in association with the Undefeated Podcast, proudly sponsored by Disturbing Sports London. I'm delighted to be here by a cruiserweight contender, Jordan Thompson, going for that IBF cruiserweight title. Jordan, how are you feeling? Uh, just about 48 hours or so out from the fight. Feeling good, man. Good, cool, calm, collected, composed, all the right things, but intense at the same time. You know, I'm trying to say I've got that energy about me, but I ain't looking to waste it. You know, I'm trying to say I'm going to need that come Saturday night and I can't wait for the occasion, can't wait for the opportunity, I can't wait to seize the opportunity. Now before anything I just want to say from me and obviously the rest of the team and that obviously condolences for uh, the family loss that you did have a little while back. Um, moving into this now, you, I think a lot of people are going to feel like you are a very big underdog in this fight. but. Do you almost take solace from the fact that when you look at your level of competition compared to Jai's level of competition prior to the Braiders fight, you probably actually had a better level. Um, does that something that makes you feel like, well, actually, if he was ready, why can't I be? A hundred percent. And again, that's only something that if you know your boxing, it's only something that people who know the boxing know. But again, it's not something that I look too much into. It's just something that I understand. Um, but again, I'm, he's shown what he can do against Braiders. Um, and he was good, he was good on the night, he came up with a good fair play to him, credit to him. Um, but I'm not Marius Bredis and that's not me disrespecting Marius Bredis because he's a fighter that I've got a lot of respect for, a lot of respect for him and his team. I shared the ring with Marius Bredis many, many rounds, so I know exactly what he can do, but Marius Bredis is not Jordan Thompson, you know what I'm trying to say? I'm a whole different kettle of fish and he'll find that outcome Saturday night. <laughs> what is it about Jai that you're most, I would say cautious of rather than worried, because obviously you've got to have a, a certain level of worry to get the best out of yourself but what's the I guess maybe the one thing that he does that you're like okay I need to be switched on for that at all times experience that's the only thing that I can say he has over me and he's banking on his experience but like I said I might not have the experience he's got in boxing but I've got life experience and the boxing and life are two very similar things so again all the ups and downs the challenges the hurdles the barriers this is all this all led to here you know what I'm trying to say it's all led to here and I can't wait to go out there and, and really just make an announcement and announce myself on the world scene. Now, when we look at Jai, we obviously can tell that he's someone that can go for adversity. We saw in the last fight, horrific double break, uh, one break in, like, I think, the third round. The second break was in sort of the ninth, jaw swinging, but he carried on, battled through. So we know he's got that grit and determination. Number one, do you think his jaw's fully healed? And is that something you're maybe going to try and exploit? I'm not. For, I'm, I'm always going to chin check my opponent. <laughs> that's one thing you can guarantee with Jordan Thompson. Is I'm going to put my hands on the man. That's a fact. So that's a prerequisite. You know what I'm trying to say? But again, it's not something that I'm going to be banking on or counting on. Again, I'm preparing for the best version of Jai Apataya. He'll get the best version of me. And we'll go and we'll find out who the best is on Saturday night. And I guess the flip side of that is obviously we don't know necessarily what he's going to be like, but we know he's got that grit in him. We've seen you obviously have to survive a, a mini crisis before, but we've obviously never had to see you take one sustained. If it gets you know really deep down in those trenches, like what is it going to take for you to bring that that proper grit and determination, that dog out that I'm not going anywhere. You're going to have to take me in this ring. See what I've been through in the last couple of months and what I've witnessed, what I've been exposed to, what I've begun to get an understanding of is all the motivation and inspiration I've ever needed. And again, life as well. The amount of hurdles, barriers, challenges, setbacks that I've overcome, it's all led to this. It's all led to this. Then only those really close to me know how low it's got and know how hard it's got. And the beautiful thing about boxing, it's, it's, it's actually a beautiful thing for me. It's a lonely, lonely spot. Ain't no, there ain't no mummy calling, ain't no one to hold your hand in there. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to work it out yourself. And it's something that I'm more than prepared to do. You know what I'm trying to say? What I've witnessed over the last couple of months, maybe three months or so, trust me, I know where it comes from. Highly blessed, highly favoured. I can't wait to go out there and show it. How does artistic violence get implemented on the weekend? The perfect balance. It's the perfect balance. I've always alluded to, for me, again, I'm learning on the job. No amateur pedigree and all that stuff that they love to, love to harp on about. It's about finding the perfect balance. I've shown, if you look at my last two fights, I've shown two completely different individuals. One, out and out boxer, amazing skill set on show, a skill set on show. The other one, brute force. Again, element of skill always, but it's about merging the two together. And that's what we've done. We went away after the last fight. That was just me trying, experimenting, 
learning stuff, practicing stuff that I've learned in the gym, you know what I'm trying to say? And again, it's for me, it's always been about coming the whole fighter, the complete fighter, because I know I've got the capability to do that. I'm not just one dimensional. Everyone's talking about the power, the power. That's because of how much power it is, how, how special the power is. That's just what, because everyone sticks to that. I think that's a standout point, but I'm the full package. And again, I'm learning on the job and I can't wait to go out there and show a more newer and more improved version of myself. In this fight, I mean, I'm assuming that you want to do everything in your power to take it out of the judges' hands. Um, do you think, though, if this fight goes into, you can actually outbox Jai for 12 rounds and actually get a decision? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Those who know me know what I'm capable of. But like you alluded to at the start, we've seen it various, various times with close friends of mine. But even look at Sandy Ryan last weekend. Boxing's boxing, man. I'd be damned if I leave this one to the judges. I will be doing everything in my power to take it out of the judges' hands. That I can assure you. But again, it never it's not going to be reckless. So everything's going to be calculated. Artistic violence. I'm not just going to run out there and just do the mad. It's artistic violence, again. But I have to get this job done within a distance. I hear that. And look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I appreciate you sitting down, speaking with me. Uh, best of luck on the weekend. And yep, all the best. Let's hope that you actually get that IBF. And is the Ring Magazine on the... Uh, and the Ring Magazine title. So, uh, John Thompson, thank you very much. And uh, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.